Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test them, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves, left by the one who had eaten, by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This indeed is the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When the evening came, his disciples went down to the sea. They got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. Now it was dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. And he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the 10th Sunday in the season of Pentecost. I hope you're doing well. Certainly, uh, we've had some warm days and perhaps we'll have a number of other rather warm and humid days. So I just encourage you to kind of watch yourself and watch your neighbors and um, just listen to your body. Your body will often tell you things that you should take seriously. So I encourage you to do that. Our Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of St. John. We have spent a considerable amount of time this year in the Gospel of Mark. Mark is remarkable for a variety of reasons, how he constructs the, his Gospel, the kind of language he uses. Um, when I was in seminary, I remember doing a paper on Mark, and Mark has more exorcisms than any other Gospel. How curious, how curious. But in today's Gospel, we heard a story that should be well known to us, one that would be described as the feeding of the 5,000. And I would encourage you to think about what you have heard about this story. It is indeed a wonderful tale. Jesus is with his disciples. A large crowd has followed him because of the signs he has done, for he has cured many of the sick. Now he goes up a mountain and he sits down, and a festival of the Jews was near. It is Passover. And so he looks up and sees a large crowd coming towards him, and his immediate thought is, where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? How interesting that our Lord should immediately worry about feeding these people. Well, our gospel writer goes on to say, he said this in order to test Philip, for he knew what he was going to do. Okay. Why talk about how, feed, how you need to feed the people? Perhaps they've brought their own food, or perhaps you don't feel as though your responsibility to feed people I had a gathering like this. I tend to think at uh, Taylor Swift's concerts, wonderful affairs. She doesn't bring out bread and fish. She doesn't necessarily try to feed everyone. Jesus, on the other hand, does. While Philip is pondering how they can feed such a large crowd, for we hear there's about 5,000 people there, 
One of his co-disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, says to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Is, is Andrew trying to find a solution or is he merely probably considering how serious a dilemma they're in? I mean, I don't know that for a fact. I don't know if Andrew is trying to solve the problem with five barley loaves, which are rather small, and two fish, which I can assure you aren't very large. But it is this young man's lunch of five barley loaves and two fish that makes all the difference. We hear how Jesus takes the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributes them to those who are seated, and so the fish as much as they wanted. In some of the other gospel accounts of the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus blesses the food, gives it to his disciples, they distribute it. But in the Gospel of John, we hear Jesus distributes it to himself. And so, can you imagine if Jesus is going through the crowd, uh, giving out bread and fish to everyone? There's 5,000 people. That must have taken a few minutes. And as Jesus continues to give out bread and fish, he continues to have bread and fish to give out. Now, once you've gotten through the first row of people, the people in the second row probably think to themselves, well, you know, he fed the first row. I'm not going to get anything because, well, how many fish could he have given out? How much bread can he have? And yet Jesus continues to go through the crowds, zigging and zagging through the crowds. Everyone, bread and fish, bread and fish, bread and fish, bread and fish, till he gets through the five thousands. And then, curiously enough, all are satisfied. And that might be enough right there, but he tells his disciples to gather up the fragments which are left over so that none may be lost. So they gather them up from the fragments of barley loaves, which he used, and they fill 12 baskets. And when the people saw the sign that Jesus had done, they began to say, this indeed is the prophet who is to come into the world. It's not unusual that the people should be so amazed that they should want to make such a man king. And so we hear Jesus realizes that they're about to come and take him by force to make him king. He withdraws from them to the mountain himself. And later his disciples cross the Sea of Galilee to return to Jesus' home, Capernaum. And after three miles out, they look around and find that Jesus is walking on the water. There's a strong wind blowing, but apparently they're more afraid of Jesus walking on the water than the strong wind. Our gospel message ends as the disciples want to take him into the boat. And as they do, the boat immediately reaches land towards which they are going. The Sea of Galilee is fairly wide. Three or four miles out might be about the midpoint in some sections of the, of the Sea of Galilee, which is actually a large lake. So all of a sudden, they're on the other side. How that happened, who knows? This is a, a miraculous story for a number of reasons. One, of course, Jesus feeding the five thousands with uh, five barley loaves and two fish. Another, that certainly he walks on the water to reach his disciples. And finally, the last one, that the boat reaches the other shore almost immediately after Jesus gets into it. What can you do with this story? It's just plain amazing. And I guess more than anything else in the Gospel of John, that's how we're supposed to respond to it. It's just amazing what Jesus does. We should have no question that he is indeed the Messiah and Son of God. Heavens, the people who were eating the fish realized it even as they had uh, finished uh, eating the fish. They say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. No one has been like Jesus. As a matter of fact, except for John the Baptist, a godly man has been generally absent from the people of Israel for many years. There have been no prophets prior to John the Baptist for 400 years. All of a sudden, John the Baptist shows up and almost immediately afterwards, Jesus begins to do miracles of healing and exorcisms and feats of power. I guess as I hear this story, I begin to believe to, for myself that if Jesus can feed 5,000 people with three small barley loaves and two fish, 
what could he do with the resources that are available today? We produce enough food to feed the world, and yet for some curious reason, we don't feed the world. What we do, on the other hand, is have a fairly sumptuous array of foods here in the United States, and there are countries that are, are just suffering greatly. How is that? How does that work? How can, we, how can we live with that kind of situation where there are some that are very hungry and some who, well, frankly, for their own benefit, they should learn to eat just a little bit less? Perhaps think about that as you consider this story, the feeding of the 5,000. How can we feed more people? How can we share what we have? How can this story, this miracle story, be true in our day using the technology and resources we have? Perhaps we're doing a great deal, but it just seems like we could be doing a bit more. Give some thought to that as you think about this miracle story and about the other miracles that Jesus did. He is indeed the Messiah and Son of God. And God continues to do miracles, even in our day. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.